What's up everyone, this is Daniel Alatore. My film that I chose for this project was Forrest Gump. It was made in 1994, and I'm a big fan of Tom Hanks. I've seen this movie a lot, and just a side note, spoiler alert. The film begins with the famous scene where Forrest is sitting on a bench, and he is speaking to a random civilian that comes up to him. This is the scene where Forrest says his famous life is like a black a chocolate story, and he begins telling his story to the random pedestrian. Now Forrest was all his life mentally challenged, and as a, at a young age, his legs were kind of messed up, so he had to wear braces, and he would get made fun of everywhere he went, and since he was mentally challenged, he wouldn't even be able to go to a regular public school until his mom pretty much bribed the principal into letting him into the school. On the bus on his way to school, he meets Jenny, which he turns out to be his first and only love throughout this film. Now Jenny helped Forrest really big when he was getting bullied by children, and Jenny yells at him, Forrest, these the famous lines, run Forrest, run, and when Forrest is running, his braces break, and he just, that's when he began having the passion of running. So, let's go on. So history repeats itself again, and Forrest is yet again bullied by his peers. This happens though when he's younger at age, and Forrest then runs across a lot of places, and he happens to run through a football game, which college, where people from the college, Alabama University to be exact, were watching the game to see who would they recruit, and they, as they see Forrest run through the game, they enroll him in Alabama, Alabama University, and he ends up being a star player, and he ends up beating JFK after winning the All-American team. And then, he goes to see Jenny at, his, at her all-girls school, which was the first time he had any romantic interest with Jenny, but it ended because it just felt awkward. And then, when Forrest graduated Alabama University, he met a young well, not a young, a military recruiter, and he recruited Forrest into the military. When Forrest is in the military, he meets a young African-American named Bubba, who has a dream of owning a shrimping business. And Forrest seems very interested in this idea, so he promises to Bubba to go into business with him after the war is over. Then Forrest gets the news that he is going to be sent to Vietnam, and he goes to see Jenny, who is working at a gentleman's club, to tell her the news. At the gentleman's club, Jenny is harassed by the man watching her show, and then Forrest protects her. And then Jenny is being followed by Forrest, and she pretty much tells Forrest to run. Run from this place. And then she attempts suicide. But then she just leaves. When Forrest and Bubba get sent to Vietnam, they meet Lieutenant Dan. Now, Lieutenant Dan is kind of a real, really skeptical with Forrest, and he's kind of a hard ass. So, yeah. And then Forrest ran into kind of trouble when this combat got really intense. So, Forrest did one brave thing, and he saved men including Lieutenant Dan, but not his best friend Bubba. And his dying words, Forrest tells Bubba that he will continue his shrimping business and he will live on his dream. When Forrest is at the military hospital, he runs across Lieutenant Dan. And that's when Forrest realizes Lieutenant Dan has become an amputee. And he apologizes. And Lieutenant Dan did not apologize, was not, did not accept his apology. Forrest Gump is then given the Medal of Honor by President LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson, and he becomes a war hero. While at the military hospital, Forrest Gump picks up ping pong, and he ends up being really well that he becomes a professional and plays in China to help seize the craziness over communist China. He is then rewarded by President Nixon, and then, well, Nixon 
Well, Nixon gives Forrest a room in Watergate, and then what the film implied is that Forrest was the reason Nixon was caught by Watergate. Later in the film, Forrest runs across a peace ra rally against war, and when they ask Forrest what he saw in Vietnam, he is cut off, but then in the distance, he sees Jenny, who is there waiting for him. And he runs across Jenny. And now when Forrest is with Jenny, he goes into crazy shenanigans from seeing the Black Panthers to getting punched in the face. And he just, it's really crazy. And Jenny ended up picking up the flower child persona. Kind of like how, how like the 60s were filled with hippies and stuff. Now, after Forrest was done being interviewed on television, he runs across Lieutenant Dan. And he sees that Lieutenant Dan has become homeless. And Forrest starts living with Lieutenant Dan. And after witnessing all the depressing stories, he tells Lieutenant Dan that if he ever starts his shrimp boat business, he'll be his first mate. And Lieutenant Dan then vanishes from Forrest. Then Forrest, while he was in the gym, a man comes to him saying that Forrest has duties in the military is no longer needed and now Forrest gets his final check and he ends up making a lot of money from just playing ping pong and what Forrest ends up doing with his money is he starts a shrimping business and it and one day while he was sailing his boat he sees Lieutenant Dan and he becomes his first mate now in the beginning Forrest and Lieutenant Dan's the shrimp business wasn't doing so well and after a big hurricane their businesses boomed. Then, while on a shrimping business, he gets a call that his mother is sick and he returns to his home. And that's where Forrest is last seen with his mother in her dying bed. And she tells Forrest that life is full, is just a box full of chocolates. Because you never know what you're going to get. Forrest then later retires from his shrimping business, leaving his business with Lieutenant Dan, and returns back to his home, where he takes up cutting grass for free. And on a day when he, had, when he was cutting grass, Jenny is sitting there, and Jenny runs up to Forrest and gives him a hug. And then for a while, Jenny was living with Forrest. And while Jenny was living with Forrest, they did many things. They reunited, they brought back their bonds, and they became friends. Then Forrest walked Jenny, was walking with Jenny, and they run across Jenny's old house where Jenny has a mental breakdown. And Forrest just is there to comfort her. And I just thought this scene was really powerful. Then later that night, Forrest and Jenny make love. But then Forrest proposes to Jenny, and Jenny declines and Forrest tells her that he may be stupid but he knows what love is the next night well the next morning Forrest doesn't see Jenny and Jenny is nowhere to be found and then for no reason Forrest just felt like running and he began running he began running and he ran to the United States he really pretty much explored the entire United States running and he becomes a big celebrity that people were looking up to him and that they thought they were looking at him like as a man who had all the answers and then one day he just stops just because he's tired. And that's where his story concludes while he was on the bench because he got a letter from Jenny saying he wanted to see her and then he ends up seeing her and they reunite again and he finds out that Forrest has had a son and he cries because his son was brilliant and while at a park bonding reuniting their bonds for Jenny tells Forrest that she doesn't have much time left and Jenny proposes to Forrest and Forrest accepts Forrest then marries Jenny, and they live happily ever after, and then 
Jenny dies, and Forrest is left crushed. But then he has a son to take care of after. And then the film ends with Forrest waiting at the bus stop with his son. And then Forrest just waits. Just like the film started, he is sitting. Now, one of my favorite things about this movie is the visual effects. And I am going to speak about the editing. Now, many of these scenes involve Forrest Gump meeting famous, famous political people like Kennedy, Nixon, and LBJ, and John Lennon, which is one of my favorite singers. And now, the effects is incredible, and it's almost realistic, and it's brilliant. Now, right here you see Forrest in the blue screen. That is part of Chroma Key, which pretty much that screen is going to give you the background of where, like, you know, he meets these characters. Now, the filmmakers used stock footage and many other stuff, but more importantly, they used Chroma Key, which is the green screen effect is here, image warping, and morphing, which is what you see with the George Bush picture and the face test, and rotoscoping to make it look more realistic, which can make it, which you see on the right, which makes it look like as if Forrest is actually interacting with the famous icons. Now, the big thing in this film is sound. This Alan Silvestri is the man in scoring. He is a great film scorer, and he he was he's really good. Like the running songs, where Forrest is running that upbeat music you hear just gives you chills. It's all him. It's all done by him, and it's absolutely fantastic. And one thing I do love about this film is how they add and add many music throughout American history and when if a scene took place in the 1940s or 50s you get songs by Elvis Presley whereas in the scene in the 1960s or 70s you get songs by the Beach Boys or Fleetwood Mac it just makes the story more rich and it makes it feel like this is a historic piece and this is what America is about and then one thing that really really helped that was, that was great is Forrest Gump's narration it's outside of the film but and again it's inside it's diegetic it's non diegetic because it transitions its stuff in the beginning it's part of the film's world but then as the as he is telling the story it's like a different thing like it's 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 fascinating and I really enjoyed that they did that now the director of this film is Robert Zemeckis now, Robert Zemeckis attended Steven Spielberg's film school, and he was raised in Chicago, Illinois, and he was always interested in filmmaking, and he even attended USC School of Filmmaking, and he is a big fan of Zanny Comedy and many other things, and he's a really cool dude. I wish I could ha check him out more. One of his films that one of my favorite films is Back to the Future, which he was responsible for, and one of my favorite animated and real life film was Roger Rabbit. And since it's in the holidays, it, he also made The Polar Express. And I think all of these films are fantastic, and it has kind of a shines of Robert Zemeckis, and he is truly a man who can tell a story, and it can just blow you away. But it can feel like it's popular culture, but it it like it's modern like it will feel dated but it just has a special chime and that's his style it's timeless yet it's aging but it's a mixture it's the best of both worlds here overall i think forrest gump is a great film it's fantastic it feels like a fairy tale but you know what it's a modern american fable that's what i think it is and it is a great film. I love it now. I loved it back then. And I feel like I'll love it forever. And it's just... It's American culture. And I'm a big American history guy. And I recommend this movie. Five stars. Two thumbs up. Check it out. It is brilliant. And I am glad it exists. <laughs>